New tonight, relief could be on the way for veterans exposed to toxic substances overseas. A bill before Congress zeroes in on taking care of the military men and women who get sick because of these harmful toxins. On your side, Jessica Clark is joining us from the newsroom following this developing story, Jess. Anthony and Jeannie, the bill sponsors made an announcement today that they have come up with this legislation and they expect it to be received with bipartisan support. So let's look at what they say it would do. Basically, it deals with veterans who have been exposed to smoke from burn pits or from toxins such as Agent Orange, even other toxic substances. The bill would expand VA health care eligibility to post 9-11 veterans, which includes more than 3.5 million toxic exposed veterans. It would also add 23 burn pit and toxic exposure related conditions to the VA's list of service presumptions. It would expand conditions the VA acknowledges are likely caused by Agent Orange exposure, and it would also strengthen federal research on toxic exposure. Now, one veteran who leads the Five Star Veterans Center in Jacksonville says veterans really do need this kind of medical help, and sometimes it's immediately upon returning home or even years after serving overseas. It obviously it affected those who work directly with it, but it also had a secondary effect because it would drift into the living area where people were, the smoke would. Out of the bill saying it does help, not just the veteran, but the veterans' families as well. So the bill needs to go through the full Congress. It goes to Senate and then the House first. Uh, there was a similar bill that got through the House a couple of months ago, but never made its way through the full uh, Congress, so it didn't go through the Senate. So we'll see what happens with this one. Uh, live in the newsroom, Jessica Clark, First Coast News on your side. Jessica, thank you. Well, when you talk about the number of people that that piece of legislation could impact, it is huge. We have been investigating this story for some time now, and by the government's own estimate, 1 million military and civilian staff and their families may have been exposed to contaminated drinking water at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. This is between the 1950s and the 1980s. It's information that unfortunately came too late for a widow here in Jacksonville, and she's been pushing for change to help those harmed by the toxic water. And they shouldn't have to be fighting their own government to be compensated for the wrongdoing of their own government. Moving up the bus. Eric Holford joined the Marines young, just 18, and he died young at the age of 53. He didn't die in combat, but his widow, Michelle James, believes his service cost him his life. He died of bladder cancer, colon cancer, and MS. They got him down as and he also had kidney disease as well. His battle with cancer ended in 2019, but his wife's fight continues. Hit, hit, hit. These people are fighting for their lives. So he suffered a lot. He did. James is now advocating for the Marines of Camp Lejeune and their families who were exposed to toxic water while stationed at the North Carolina military base. There was a cocktail of chemicals that was released in the water, which has been proven to cause cancer. The water was tainted by solvents and hazardous chemicals disposed off base by a dry cleaning company and industrial activities on base. The VA acknowledges people who spent as little as 30 days between 1953 and 1987 may have been impacted. Veterans with these eight diseases, including Parkinson's, may be eligible for compensation, and veterans or their family members with these 15 conditions, including miscarriage, may be eligible for health care benefits. My husband, unfortunately, wasn't one that was made aware, and even up to this day, there's a lot of people who were at um, Camp Lejeune in North Carolina, they're not aware that they could be could have been exposed to the toxic water. James and others want additional illnesses added to the list, and they want the VA to create a registry to track just how many people have been sickened. They can build up this register and get a tally of the amount of people that have come in with different illnesses. And I'm finding that more and more people are going forward with colon cancer, but colon cancer isn't one of those that's on the list. When people go into the Marines. In March, the House of Representatives passed a wide ranging bill that includes the Camp Lejeune Justice Act. It would give those harmed a two year window to sue for compensation. 
It now goes to the Senate, where it has the backing of Senator Marco Rubio. We hope we can get that done, and always the opposition to it is money. But, um, you know, we, the, uh, my view of it is that we owe these people for their pain and suffering after serving our country and being hurt by the negligence of government. Even here, you can see he's got um, the colostomy bag, and he was told you would only have that for about six weeks. He had that for life. James believes had her husband known about the toxic water at Camp Lejeune sooner, he could have been diagnosed earlier and possibly still be alive. There's Marines, they're suffering right now. They put their lives on the line for their country, but you would hope that at the end of it, that there'll be some recognition for the sacrifice that they made, considering this was no fault of their own. And so the big breaking news tonight is that a bipartisan deal has been reached in the Senate, and it does include the Camp Lejeune Justice Act. That is according to Senator Marco Rubio's office. Now, once the text of this bill has been finalized, it will then be put on the floor for, for a vote by the Senate. After it passes the Senate, it must then be passed by the House and signed into law by President Biden. We, of course, will keep you updated.